In this video, we will focus on how to determine the centroid of an area, which is the geometric center of an area. From the previous video, we learned how to theoretically determine the location of the center of gravity for a rigid body with respect to a given coordinate system, x bar, y bar, and z bar. And we also know that weight equals to mass times g, which is the gravitational acceleration, and for the general near-Earth situation, it can be considered as a constant about 9.81 meter per second squared. Therefore, the constant g can be canceled out from the numerator and the denominator of this equation, and this new set of formulas now represent the coordinates of the center of mass for the rigid body. In this case, the center of gravity is the same as the center of mass. And we also know that mass equals to density rho times the volume. And if the rigid body has uniform density, then density rho can also be canceled out from the numerator and the denominator of the equation. And now this new set of formulas represent the coordinates of the centroid of volume for this rigid body. Note that centroid means a geometric center. And in this case, the center of gravity, the center of mass, and the centroid of the volume are all the same point. And if the volume has a uniform thickness, then we can further reduce the situation from 3D to 2-dimensional and cancel out the thickness from this equation. And now we have coordinates for the centroid of an area. And sometimes we can even further reduce the situation by canceling out the constant width of an area and get the coordinates for the centroid of a line. The line could be either straight or curved. Since centroid is the geometric center of a volume or shape, if the volume or shape has any axis of symmetry, then centroid must be on this axis of symmetry. Therefore, we can easily determine the centroid location of several common symmetrical shapes such as a cube, a circle, a rectangle, or a straight line. This can be used to help find the centroid for other unsymmetrical volume or shape. So let's look at this example, finding the central location for a right triangle with base of B and height of H. I will demonstrate this problem using two different approaches. First of all, we need to put this triangle into an XY coordinate system so that we can apply these two equations to find the centroid location. Since in these two equations, X and Y represent the coordinates of an arbitrary point XY in this triangle, Let's define a differential element at this location with size of dx and dy. Therefore, the area of the differential element dA equals to dx times dy. Also, it is helpful to know the equation for this line, which is y equals to h over b times x, as we learned from linear functions probably in pre-calculus class. This is helpful because we will use this as the upper limit when we integrate along the y direction. Therefore, first we calculate for x bar. The numerator is an integration of x times dA integrated along the y-axis from 0 to the line h over bx and along the x-axis from 0 to b. And we get 1 third hb squared. And we do the same thing with the denominator, which is 1 half h times b. You might notice this is simply the area of the triangle, one-half height times the base. That is correct. The denominator in this formula is simply the total area. Therefore, x bar is calculated to be 2 third times b. And then we do the same thing for the y bar. The denominator is, of course, still the total area, one-half h times b. But we need to integrate y dA and eventually we get y bar equals to one third h. This is the first approach. However, integration with two variables can sometimes be difficult. Therefore, let's look at a second approach in which we only need to integrate with one variable. 
So we have the same red triangle put in the xy coordinate system, but this time we choose a vertical strip of width dx instead of a little square to be our differential element. The height of this strip is determined by the y coordinate of this point, which is h over b times x as we determined earlier from the equation of this line. Now, in these equations, as you can see, x and y are replaced by x tutor and y tutor. This is because now my differential element can no longer represent a particle. Therefore, in these two equations, x tutor and y tutor represent the coordinates of the central location of the differential element, which in this case is a rectangle, and we know that its centroid is right here at the center. And we can tell that x tutor equals to x, and dA equals to the area of the rectangle, which is the height, h over b times x, times the width, which is dx. We plug these into the first equation. Therefore, x bar equals to 2 third b, just like we got using the first approach. But here, as you can see, we only need to integrate over one variable, x. To find y bar, we do the same thing, but use a horizontal strip instead. And again, we get the same result y bar is one third h. So it is up to you to decide what is the best method to use. As you can see, choosing the differential element cleverly can greatly simplify your calculation. Now we mark the centroid position on the triangle. And as you can see, it is located at one third location to either side. Actually, if you recall, we used this conclusion before when replacing a linearly distributed loading, the one that shapes like a triangle, with a concentrated load. The centroid locations for common shapes have long been summarized and can be easily found online or in engineering textbook or handbooks. For example, here is a screenshot of a Wikipedia page on centroids. You might find this information very useful.